Okay. So today is, uh, well, September 25th. Time goes quick. Actually, the older you get, the quicker the time flies, the faster it flies. But let's not get philosophical. All right. Now, um, just as a recap on what's going on here, um, this is the main class portal. And if you scroll down, you're going to see this is, I'm leaving this thing on this announcement permanently. So you could, you can click on this link. And this is our YouTube playlist for this year, for this uh, particular class. And if you go on to that thing, see this thing is populating. It was just that video in the beginning, but now look, I'm uh, recording all our YouTube classes and I'm posting them. It's just the online ones because, you know, if you have a class in person, I can't do that, right? Um, <clears throat> because we're not recording them. Uh, so this is populating and on the top part is going to be always the lectures. And after the last lecture that we have done, that was recorded and posted, the second half is the labs. Please watch this lab two video. Also, please bring the tools that you're required to bring. Uh, as you noticed, um, if you don't bring the proper tools, you are going to be quite uncomfortable in the lab. Well, it's just the nature of this beast, right? Um, also, please watch the prep videos. I just put video number two, uh, lab number two on that. But it... I'm going to um, populate the lab section also. You see, this is about one hour long. Please watch it. Get the most out of it. You paid money for this course. I'm trying to, I'm doing my best, not trying to, but I'm doing. Uh, <clears throat> what I'm doing is I'm, 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 I'm trying to give you the, 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 the all kinds of possible ways uh, to, 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 to get the knowledge that you're supposed to, uh, that you're supposed to get. So use that. You paid money for this, use the product. Right? Okay. So that's as far as that. Um, yeah. Also, there's an important thing. Go back to the main class portal. If you scroll down the announcements, you're going to see the section numbers. So pretty much everybody knows where they belong. Now here is the lab schedule. Okay. Notice section two and section six. When the time comes for you, section two and section six, do your lab two it's a bit of like orangey color here and here, just sections two and section six. There's no school that day. That's when the holiday comes up. So I would encourage section two and section six to join any of the lab two classes out of your schedule whenever you can. We're going to fit you in, no problem. The room capacity is way more than... than, than um, uh, than just one section for us. Right? It's a big room and the capacity is bigger because not we are not the only ones who are supposed to be there. So whenever you can, come out of schedule, <clears throat> join other sections. And if you don't, you still have a like a free agent kind of a ticket to join any of the, any of the other sections to complete lab two. Make sure you do that. I think we have already three or four people that have done lab two right after lab one, which uh, is a good thing, but we have uh, well, about 16 more people to do that, right? So just keep that in mind. It's just how it works this year with the academic calendar. Excuse me? Yes. The whole Friday in October 6th is a holiday or just for safety lab? No, it's uh, there's no school. No school. Okay, yeah. sorry. I Thanks. think it's uh, yeah, but you have done lab two already, right? Yeah, I am. Yeah, great. Thanks. Right. Good stuff. All Thank right. you. Right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, all right. Um, <clears throat> okay, let's 
get on with the lesson, shall we? Um, here is a wonderful PowerPoint. And here is a funny thing, funny picture, because you know what? Uh, things are good if funny things happen, but not these funny things. This one says some things never change. And this thing here is like a few thousand years ago when they were cavemen and they were working on certain things. I'm not sure he was just hitting some kind of a wood with another piece of wood. And he slapped his finger. And look at that, a few thousand years further. These guys must be old. Uh, they never learned. Right? So, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, and what does it say here? Be careful with hand tools. Okay. So here, hand tools, safe use, and proper selection. That's the topic of this week. All right. A few things I'm going to say about this. These are wire cutting pliers, also known as side cutters, also known as diagonal cutters. I noticed that some of us are bringing the smaller version of these, the miniature version, also known as precision version of that. Those smaller version of uh, th that smaller version of the of the wire cutters is for the breadboard thin wire use. They work well then and there, but for the size of wires that we are using get these, bring these. So you're not uncomfortable during this lab, during the labs. And so you use the proper tools for the proper job. So you can do job properly. Let's look at the anatomy of the wire cutting pliers or side cutters or diagonal cutters. Here we have handles. And these handles are made out of uh, PVC kind of a grip type of handles. Yes, they are uh, a PVC or plastic, some sort of a, you know, a thixotropic plastic. Um, they are insulators. However, those handles with the PVC type of, um, you know, um, claddings, if you will, They are made for your comfort, only they are not designed. The purpose, their purpose is not to isolate you from the wires, from live wires. Yes, they might isolate you from live wires, but that is not the official purpose. Always turn off the power when you're working on wires. Low voltage wires. By the way, that 120 RMS, 120 volts RMS that is in our receptacles in our living or kitchen, living room or kitchen or bedroom or whatnot, that's where you plug in your fridge and TV and your iron, it's 120 volts RMS. It is considered a low voltage. Yeah. It still can throw you across the room but uh, it's considered a low voltage. So it can do some damage. It can kill you, right? So those, even though there's a misconception that these are meant to isolate you from that, so you should be safe. No, these are just for the ergonomics purposes and for the ergonomic purposes. Ergonomics is a study of the comfortable and proper use of tools and whatever objects are being used by humans, like chair or a car seat or uh, I don't know, hand tools as well. Uh, so things are being comfortable and you don't get hurt from prolonged use of whatever it is. So ergonomic, so these are for ergonomics purposes and comfort purposes, not for electrical isolation, those handles. All right, we do have uh, jaws here. And the jaws have blades, and the whole thing is bound by the joint. 
Yeah. Okay. Wire cutting pliers. That's what they look like. Bring the normal size or this size, the it's so called power version as opposed to precision. Power is the one that of the size that we have seen already during our labs. And the smaller ones are so called precision version of the wire cutting pliers because they're smaller. Right, similar tool is snips. It also has handles. It also has that joint or a pivot point. It also has jaws that have blades, but they are shaped a little bit different. These blades are shaped to cut sheet metal, not wires. And this is the anatomy of that. Handles, we got the grips, uh, and here's the joint that in this case is called a pivot bolt, does have blades, and there's a bit of a locking latch for storing purposes. You just latch that on so this whole thing stays in a closed position. So these are for cutting sheet metal, and these are for cutting wires. Use the proper tool for the proper job. All right, here's a monkey wrench. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah. Okay. <clears throat> uh, also called adjustable wrench. In some European countries, there's also called a French, French wrench. I don't know. Um, maybe because it was invented in France. Who knows? Uh, now, what do we have here? We have jaws. But the jaws don't have blades because this is for this tool is for screwing and unscrewing or driving and well undriving I guess bolts and nuts and it's adjustable. So how do we adjust it? We have a the whole handle and we have permanently mounted to the handle. It's part of it. It's the fixed jaw. See that here. Yeah. We also have the adjustable jaw. While we turn the warm screw, there's a bit of a gear that can move things left and right or up and down. And it's going to move along this shaft, the adjustable jaw. So we could adjust it to the proper size of the bolt that we're trying to drive. Now here, how do we use this thing properly? All right, so here's the fixed jaw. Here is the adjustable jaw. And here's the nut that we're trying to turn. And let's say we're going to turn this thing with the power, because we need to tighten things up. And we're going to turn this this way here as the arrow points. That's the right way of doing, the proper way of using this adjustable wrench. What happens here as opposed to the wrong way of turning this way? When you use when you turn this when you turn the wrench this way here against the bolt, look what happens here. Most of the pressure, the physical pressure is going to concentrate on the fixed jaw, which is what we want. And this one here is still doing some work, but not as much as this, not nearly as much as the fixed jaw. And mostly it's going to provide some guidance for the physical motion. That's what we want. If we flipped the wrench here in that way, and we're still turning the same way, look what's happened. what happens. Most of the pressure, the physical pressure, the power is going to concentrate on the adjustable jaw. And the adjustable jaw is not seated as strongly as the fixed jaw. There's a thread, there's a bit of a gear, there's a shaft, there's, you know, there's not that, the other thing. Too many things can go wrong. What can go wrong? Well, something can snap. And if something snaps, all of the way, all of the sudden, all the power that you're providing with your hand 
is going to go in the direction that you're pushing or pulling. You can hurt somebody else. You can hurt yourself. You can damage the equipment. So if you are going to turn it this way here, you're going to flip it, position that this way. If you're going to turn it the other way, then yes, you're going to have to position it that way. So the mass of the pressure falls onto the fixed jaw, not the adjustable jaw. All right, hammers. Uh, well, over here, claw or pin. Uh, well, this is a claw hammer. That's what the claw looks like. The anatomy of that is, here's a handle, of course, and here's the grip part of the handle. And when you're hammering using the hammer, you should position your, your hand. So the center of gravity versus the positioning of your hand and the way you're hitting things, they work for you. Don't grab it here because you're not going to have proper forces distribution and then you're going to use the hammer wrong way. And even that little hammer, that's a simple, one of the simplest tools that you can ever, if you don't respect it, don't treat it well, don't use it properly, it will hurt you. And you don't want to get hurt by a hammer. Okay, okay. there we go. Uh, claw hammer is used for driving and removing nails only. Anatomy continue it. Here's the face of the hammer, right here. Here's the throat, cheek, and that's the head. Right? And here's the eye of the hammer. Now, <clears throat> if you use this hammer, on things other than driving and removing nails, such as hitting a chisel, which is a larger chunk of metal. Or if you're trying to, I don't know, maybe knock out the rotors from the tires, you're supposed to hit that with a hammer a little bit uh, for them to fall out. Or if you're hitting any kind of larger chunk of metal, you should not use this type of hammer. Why? Is it because it's too small and you're gonna, you can get a bigger hammer? No, that's not the reason. The reason for that is that the chemical composition of the metal isotope, this type of metal is made in a way that is not supposed to be used on metal on metal hammering. This one here, if you use that, if you strike larger metal, this thing can break. Things can chip away. Things can fly into your eye. There you go. Maybe there's, maybe I should write a song about that. Uh, fly in your eye. Uh, so this type of metal is not meant for striking other piece of metal. Yes, a nail is made out of metal, but it is a small enough insignificantly small piece of metal and it's being driven into a softer surface so there's no bounce back with that and here's the claw that is supposed to be used for uh, removing the nails you just slide it onto the head and pull it as a lever or a lever and the nail comes out Simple enough. Use it properly and nobody gets hurt and everybody's happy. Now, on the other side, we have, on the other hand, we have something that's called a ball pin hammer. Now, this one here, this type of metal isotope is chemically constructed to handle metal on metal striking. Nevertheless, you should never hit hammer on hammer. I don't know why would somebody do that, but there's always some idiot that tries to kind of show off doing or you know just being funny or, or playful like that. Even those are not supposed to be hit one on one um, because things 
can chip away and fly at high speed. And they can do a lot of damage. So this is a ball pin hammer. This is the type of hammer. If you want to strike a rotor to remove it, well, of course, you're not going to reuse that rotor, but, uh, you know, um, it, or, or, or hit a chisel or anything that's larger chunk of metal other than nail, right? Well, you can still use that for striking nails. You know, not, nothing wrong with that. You won't be able to remove the nail with that because, you know, you can't. It doesn't have a claw, right? Uh, but this type of metal isotope is meant, is designed to handle metal on metal striking. All right, let's take a little kind of a confirmatory type of a safety quiz. See what do we remember from all that we have here, what I've said. All right, question one, plastic covered handles on wire cutting pliers might also be used to cut low voltage live electrical wire and do we have true or false? What do we get? What do we get? False, false, false. Great. You guys are listening. All right. So let's see here. Okay. okay. Oh. There. That's correct. False. Plastic cover handles are for comfort only. Always cut off electrical power before cutting wires. Okay. Question two. Uh -uh. When tightening a nut with adjustable wrench, always pull the wrench towards you. Never push the wrench away from you. True or false? True or false? I know we didn't talk about pushing or pulling, but what do you think? Is this thing true or false? Let's let's analyze this. Analyze this uh, situation here. We get true, 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 true. Yep. Yeah. We got some people saying true, good. It is true. Always pull. Well, sometimes um, you are going to find yourself in a situation that well, you have no choice but to just push it away from you than, uh, rather than pulling, you know, because, you know, it's life. But hopefully you won't have that situation too many times. And if you do that, just remember this. Just be extra conscious, extra careful of what can happen. What can happen? What can happen? Is that, well, you know, um, if there's any archers in the room here that uh, you know, belong to archery club, what do we need to know when, as far as, uh, you know, shooting the arrow towards a target? Well, we need to know where the target is, right? We need to know how to use the bow or a crossbow. And you need to know what's behind the target. So if the arrow is a flyer and it's going to fly past the target, it's not going to hurt anyone. You need to see what the backdrop is, what's behind that. So the same thing. If you're going to push the wrench, Look what's in the pathway. If something lets go all of the sudden, where is your hand going to go? What is going to hit? Uh, are you going to go out of balance? Just keep this in mind only absolutely when you have no choice. So I'm just making kind of you aware of things like that. But if you if, if you can control the situation, Always pull, and most importantly, the force of the pulling should be on the fixed jaw, not on the adjustable jaw. Because adjustable jaw can snap away. And so you're going to jerk towards the, towards the direction of the force you're applying. And things can happen to your body, even if you don't hit anything. Can you get a whiplash? Yes, you can get a whiplash if something like that happens. Um, you can you, you can strain your muscle. You can, you know. Um, but uh, if you know if you don't know what whiplash is, just Google that, and hopefully that is going to be as far as you need to know. Uh, you don't want to experience a whiplash in real setting. It's not fun, trust me. And it lasts a long time. Question number three, claw hammers might be used to strike wood chisels. True or false? 
False, false, false. We get questions answered. Yes, that's correct. It is false. Chisel is, you know, a tool made out of metal. So you're striking another piece of metal with that hammer. And we're not supposed to use a claw hammers for that. Why? Because the type of metal that is being used to build the claw hammer is not a type of metal that is meant to be safely striking another piece of metal. Things can chip away and they can fly into your eye. False. Claw hammers are for driving and removing nails only. Question four. Screwdrivers might be used for the purpose other than driving or removing screws, such as prying open can lids. I'm going to stop here for a second, um, just like a, the other class. Just before you, I explained uh, that uh, there's a little kind of a short uh, a situation that, uh, that I was part of, um, well, sort of indirectly. Uh, years and years ago, I participated in one of many, the, you know, first class, first class, first aid, um, uh, first aid uh, uh, training. And you will to as you go along um, and the person who was teaching us was a nurse and she said that uh, some time ago she worked in an emergency department of a hospital somewhere up north where there's some tourist uh, you know, area there and during the summer season she said believe it or not but most of the cases that we had, people coming in were with a cut hands because the tourists or the campers, mostly men, <laughs> they were trying to be uh, really um, um, creative on how to open the tin cans with food. And they got hurt because they were trying to, um, um, they were trying to, be creative on opening the tin cans with uh, with the knives, and some of them got hurt <laughs> pretty bad. Right, so that was the that was the kind of interesting story. So always use the proper tool for the proper for, for the proper uh, uh, task. Now, we should be more sensitive to this type of situation because we are going to be using tools um, on daily basis. Way more than just some kind of a kitchen junk drawer type of a tape measure that you're going to use once every eight months or something like that. No, you're going to, those tools are going to use are going to use every day on a regular basis, almost eight hours a day. So, uh, you know, is there is there you know, is there more chances? Is there a greater chance of some accident to happen if you don't use things properly? Well, yeah, of course, just the statistics. You know? So that's why we. are Kind of having this, uh, this 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 discussion here. So, the answer is false. Screwdrivers must be used, and any other tools are supposed to be used for the purpose. And it comes to screwdrivers, they must be used to tighten and remove screws, and for no other purpose. And we keep going with the question. Five, we have seven questions, so five and six. Snips are permissible for cutting wire, true or false? Uh, what do we have here? False, uh, we got some, yeah, people are saying false, false, false. Good, do they? There's one person that said false. I was looking at the other ones. All right, cool, yeah, yeah, we got you going. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, it's false. Snips are for cutting sheet metal. Wire cutters are for cutting wires. All right. Question six. Let's do this. Uh, a proper use of ball pain hammer is striking chisels and punches. Is that true or false? Ding, 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 ding. Okay, we got trues. Lots of trues. Good. Yeah, that's that's you know, correct. Ball pin hammers are specifically hardened to strike chisels and punches. Metal, metal contact. And the last question, question seven. Safety glasses or goggles should be always worn whenever using hand tools. We got true. Now, I just want to point you to one thing. 
goggles and glasses. What's the difference? Um, well, goggles are the rubbery kind of a sealed um, uh, shape that you wear and you seal off your face or eyes from things that can splash. If you just use glasses and if you're in a splashy kind of acidy environment, the you know, liquids can go around those frames and go into your eyes. So sometimes you need to use goggles depending on the situation, right? So that's why some people use, use the, you know, goggles and glasses. That's the difference between glasses and goggles. And glasses, sometimes they're being called spectacles or specs. All right. Uh, so safety glasses should be always worn. You know, here's a little, another little, very, very extremely short story. When I was, uh, when I had my first job, I was alone, doing a long thing that I was, you know, in control of the whole thing. And I right after college and I said to myself, I am here. I am the king of this bench. Uh, so nobody's going to tell me, you know, uh, finally, there's nobody breathing behind my back telling me to wear safety glasses. So you know what? I'm just going to be comfortable in my own skin and not use And you know, That was the moment that I was really reminded uh Learn the hard way that yes, you know, the, the safety glasses have purpose. And that's all I'm going to say that it happened many, many years ago. Good thing I didn't get hurt uh, too much. So, yeah, uh, eye protection, PPE, should always be worn when working with hand tools to provide, to prevent eye injury. Okay. All right. So, people with hard stomachs. Let's see here, a couple of statements. Hand tools can be just as dangerous as power tools and other equipment when not used, stored or maintained properly. That's a very important statement here. There's, it's a myth that power tools are more dangerous than hand tools. That's what puts your safety consciousness asleep. And that's when you get hurt. In power tools, you get the power from electricity, yes, and you get sometimes more power. Yeah, some things can cause more severe you know, um, damages than others. However, with hand tools, you also apply power. It's your muscle power. And believe me, it's enough. Our muscle power is enough to hurt ourselves. And an injury is an injury. Uh, okay. Your hand tools are an important part of your job and should be treated, cared for, and used in a professional manner. Use the proper tool for a proper job. Use it properly. Like, for example, um, here's an old cliche question. What's more dangerous, a dull knife or a sharp knife? And, of course, the answer is that the dull knife can be more dangerous. Why? Knife is meant to do cutting, and you do the cutting. Uh, you are going to handle that knife and you're going to hold it and position that. And you're going to apply the force according to how that thing is made if it's in the proper condition. If the knife is dull, which is not meant to be, you, you still need to, you're still going to try to do the same job as if the knife were sharp. So you're going to try to compensate for handling, holding it differently, applying power at different angles or whatnot. And that's when you get hurt. And a dull edge still can hurt us. Uh, well, sometimes in a worse way than the sharp edge. Eh, you know. But who is to judge, all right? And if you don't use the uh, proper tools for proper job, what happens? Well, this happens, right? And this happens, and many other things can happen. That goes with any other tool, all right? And trust me, those things do happen. Like seriously, well, that's all I got to say about that. Now, it's estimated that about 8% of industrial accidents involve the unsafe use of hand tools, both manual and power. 8%. Yeah, that's a lot. These accidents result from using the wrong tool for the job or using the right tool incorrectly. First example on the left. And as I said to the other class just before you, 
I am pretty sure that this was the, the, the position of the knife and the finger behind that. It was created, the situation was created for the purpose of safety photography. Okay. <clears throat> what do we have? Remember the story about the bow and arrow and the target? If you're shooting at the target, make sure you know what's behind the target so you don't hurt somebody else with the arrow if you miss the target. What can happen here? If I apply enough power, this material is going to provide certain type of resistance for the cutting, and then maybe it's going to go. If you start, if it starts going, maybe things are going to go pretty fast, and this thing goes right in the finger. You know, not a happy situation. Okay, now. This probably here is posed a picture. I, I'm pretty sure I, you know, this is, it's a posed picture to not to make things funny, but maybe for the purpose of um, um, uh, safety, kind of awareness. And maybe those guys went kind of, you know, more realistic, less realistic that things uh, things can happen. But uh, nevertheless, it uh, you know it sends the message that uh, tools should be used um, for the for the proper as intended, and it should be used not should be used it should not be used in an improper way. Um, yeah, and. The next slide is just a magnified version of that. So there you go. Have a good laugh, guys. All right. Uh, we're going to just going to, this is the second last slide for today. Let's kind of analyze a couple of those, few of those statements, actually all of them. Never use any tool, hand or power, unless you are trained to do so. And here's a little, another live situation that I encountered. One of my neighbors wanted to lend me a chainsaw because I needed to cut some larger piece of lumber and that's supposed to speed things up for me. So yeah, why don't you use my chainsaw? Go ahead, you know, I'll, you know buy me a beer sometime later. Uh, so I never used the chainsaw. That was some years ago. I never used the chainsaw before. So I just went to the, you know, YouTube university, see what YouTube has to say about chainsaws, just so I, you know, I'm not completely green on doing, uh, you know, using this thing. Yeah. I don't even know how to start the damn thing. All right. So uh, I, I watched a couple of videos and it was on the safety thing. And I just decided, you know what? Not worth it. I'm not going to use that. It's going to take me a long time to use just a handsaw. That's fine. Or an ax. Uh, but uh, just watching those couple of safety videos, first of all, I wasn't comfortable with that. Second of all, I didn't know if there were any metal objects inside that those tree branches, and tree branches can hide metal objects. Uh, like for example, if if you have a you know, tree in the backyard and you decide to use that little you know eye hook uh, or loop uh, to 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 hang a swing and uh, then you know you get bored of that swing and take this thing off but you never remove that hook that thing will be grown over by the tree and it's going to completely engulf that it's going to be inside as the tree grows and you don't know it's there you run the chainsaw on that you hit that thing this thing bounces back right into your face and you have no time to react and you know most of us i don't know but most of us kind of it's not our favorite thing to get a you know running chainsaw right into our face um i don't know maybe some people like it but i don't right uh so um i just decided not to use it so it says never use any tool hand or power unless you are trained to do so and sometimes you don't think about the possibilities of how you can get hurt with any type of tool. And you know what? Just like the minesweeper, you only have one chance of making a mistake. And there's the phone. Okay, somebody picked it up. Good. Uh, all right. Inspect tools before each use and replace if worn or damaged yeah as i say uh, the tools that we're using we're not using them once in a while these are our bread and butter type of tools that we'll be using whether well, some of them you're going to use more some less but make sure that they're inspected and they're stored properly to see if they're damaged okay. 
clean your tools after every use, you know, properly, clean them properly. A clean tool uh, or a dirty tool can hide some hazards. Uh, keep cutting edges sharp. We talked about that already. Never test a cutting edge on your fingers. Test on your friend's fingers. Just kidding, don't do that. Test on scrap piece of material instead. Right. Carry tools correctly. Never put sharp or pointed tools in your pockets. I mean, do I have to explain that? Um, don't put sharp tools in your pockets. You bend over, you squat to pick things up and go up the ladder, up and down the ladders. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, if you have sharp tools in your pockets, um, you, you can you can have a situation that's you know less happy than others, right? Uh, okay, here lightly oil metal tools and store them clean, dry place to prevent rust. Again, tools should be in working condition. If it's not in any kind of way in the intended type of a condition, then you're going to it's going to affect the way you use it, which means you're going to use it not in a proper way. You're going to improvise the holding. Um, um, then uh, you're going to handle the tool not in a proper way. I got a chart here. A chain so spins clockwise. If something goes wrong, the metal object... Yeah, the metal object will go ground first. But the actual arm of the chainsaw with the chain spinning on it is going to bounce the other way, which is going to directly into your face. <laughs> I don't know which is worse. An itch, itchy, or was it a bear or an itchy nose? Which movie was that from? Uh all right, I think it was called Almost Heroes. That was the movie. Uh, light the on, okay, store them, da da da. Wear personal protective equipment such as safety goggles or glasses, face shields, and gloves, etc. Gloves is a big thing, you know, it's it's kind of like one of those hidden dangers. You're going to notice that a lot of people wear gloves, and you can buy pretty good gloves now, some of the you know more expensive, but then again, that's an investment. Uh, use gloves as much as you can on sites prevent your hands because you're using your hands a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Any kind of protection that you can give those hands, your hands are going to thank you. You know what? Trust me on that one. Okay. Um, do not use tools if handle has splinters, burrs, cracks, splints. That basically, well, brings me back to the same thing that we talked about already. If the tool is not if the tool is not in the proper condition, you are going to use it not properly. And then that's where I get hurt. Do not use impact tools such as hammers, chisels, punches, or steel stakes that have mushroomed heads. What's a mushroom head? Here's the last slide for today. This is a mushroomed head. It's not supposed to be like that. It's cracked. You hit this thing hard enough with some hard enough object, those things can fly out on impact. And they are going to carry that energy of that impact. And you know what? By Murphy's law, they fly exactly where you don't want them. And that's going to be in your eye. So hopefully not. Um, so that's going to be the last uh, slide for today. And we're going to pick this up. Uh, we've got a few more slides uh, tomorrow in person. And uh, that's it for today. How wonderful beginning of the week. And you know what, as I always say, today's Monday. What's today? It's almost Friday because you know why? Every day is almost Friday. Have a good one, guys. Keep smiling. And girls. Hey, Mr. Bog. Hey. Um, I want to ask you for uh, the, what's it called? Um, the lab two. Can I schedule for this Thursday with section five to get it done? Are you section, which section are you? Section six. Section, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I do it for this Thursday? Most definitely. Yep. Yeah, just show up and let me know that you're there. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you. Have a good one.
Um, would I be good to come in this Friday for the for the section I to do lab two as well? Yeah, if you're a section two or section six, just show up. All right, and you're good. Thank you very much, guys. Have a good one.